All right, what's up, guys? It's Jay Zeno here, and we're back with a very special episode of the Footy Culture. Yes, sir. We're here at Napoli Club Toronto at Resto Bar Cafe with some beauties from <laughs> Napoli Club Toronto. In my opinion, the best fan club in the city. Jeez. 100%. Um, we got a couple of beauties around the table, so let's start over here. Maybe, yeah, introduce yourself and um, get into, like, how you guys started Napoli Club in the first place. All right. Well, I'm uh, Carmen Guadagno. I'm the president of the, the Napoli Club in Toronto. And uh, you know what? Before we get into the, um, before telling the story, let's all introduce ourselves first and I'll take over again and get back into yeah, it. Okay. Sure. Yeah, for uh, sure. Serena Verdoliva, vice president of uh, Napoli Club Toronto. I'm uh, Stefano Chaffee and I run the social media for Napoli Club Toronto. All right. All right. Sounds good. So I'm Matthews, Matt, <laughs> y'all didn't know. Nice to meet y'all. But nice to meet you guys. I'm uh, Matt. No, I'm John Chris. And I'm a even. Juventus fan in the Napoli area, so hey, hey. it's a Napoli kind of day. Careful. But yeah, um, obviously, I believe you guys started in 2019. Um, let us know, like how how the story began here. Uh, you want me to start? Go ahead. Well, it, it, it kind of unofficially started with uh, the Napoli uh, Barcelona game in Michigan. Mm. Yeah, um, we were funny enough all there, but we didn't know. Well, me and Stefano knew each other; we're cousins. But I didn't know Carmen. We actually sat like maybe a row or two, uh, like away from each yeah, other. It was, oh, yeah, uh, like four, four, yeah. like four rows right in front oh, of each other. But we uh, we both kind of thought the same thing uh, when we were there. We we met a lot of uh, Napoli fans from the GTA, so we're thinking, hey, you know, I, I thought personally that there wasn't many Napoli fans in the greater Toronto area. Yeah. So, and Carmen thought the same thing as well. Um, so we were both kind of blown away by the amount of uh, Napoli fans that were in the greater Toronto area. Nice. So I think, I'm not sure who tweeted first. Though, Danny. Was, was it Danny? It was Danny. So Danny, uh, another uh, uh, you know member of the Napoli Club uh, Board of Directors, um, had tweeted out like, oh, is there any, you know, he tweeted at, at a popular... Uh, Twitter fan page. I'm sure. I'm not sure if you guys know uh, Azuri fan film. Oh yeah, yeah. very yes. familiar. Of yeah. <laughs> so he tweeted him. He's like, "Do you know any you know Napoli fans uh, in Toronto?" Mm-hmm. And uh, he kind of like. And then, then he tweeted out. He's like, "Oh, if you want to start a Napoli club, uh, talk talk to." He added me, and he added Carmine. And okay. then Carmine, you know, basically DM me and said, "Hey, you want to get this going?" And then it just kind of started from there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like Sereno just basically told. The story as it is. I mean, before that, so from my perspective, when I bought the tickets to watch uh, Napoli Barcelona in Michigan, my expectation was it was going to be 60,000 Barcelona fans and me and my dad as <laughs> Napoli fans. Like that, That's kind of what I went into um, the game expecting. But as I get into Ann Arbor, where the, the stadium is, I see a lot of blue shirts pop around the city. And of course, us being Neapolitans, we're loud and we're crazy <laughs> and we party yeah. for no reason whatsoever. But it's for a sure. fun time. So we start seeing a bunch of blue jerseys walking around Ann Arbor and um, we get together. We were at a restaurant all talking with each other. And I, I, I got curious. I asked, OK, where are you guys coming from? Well, we're, we are, we're driving in from Mississauga, Richmond Hill, Vaughan, Toronto, Oakville, uh, a couple of people from the London area. And it dawned on me, all the fans that I had met, bar five of them, all came from Ontario to watch this game. Crazy. Specifically the GTA. I know, crazy. I would have expected a lot more Americans. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were, but the amount of people from Ontario coming over was also astonishing to me. And that's kind of what sparked the idea for me. I've always had the idea in my head because my dad, who's also a Napoli fan, in the 70s and 80s on College Street... There was an Napoli club. It oh, was at uh, really? it was at the original place where we first hosted our meets called Gatonero right. on College Street, and uh, it, it just I don't know it just went away and it, there hasn't been a Napoli club since. And I looked everywhere. I asked my dad. I scaled the city up, down, left, right, and center. Nothing. So I always had this idea, and it just I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to go on with it. And then I forgot about it. And then it was not until. That tweet came out with uh, with Danny, and I saw Sereno. Sereno was at there. I didn't know who he was, but I took a leap of faith. I said, "Okay, I mean, what's the worst that could happen?" He says, "No, so what?" So I DM him. I'm like, "Listen, if you want to do this, I'm in 100. percent Let's get into it." And he agreed. So from that night, basically, or. Yeah, it was that night. I hadn't slept all night because <laughs> I was too busy. I was making social media. I was getting everything set up. 
And yeah, it was basically from that night, September 7th, 2019. That's when the club started and it's been going pretty good since. Awesome. Beautiful. I feel like there was something in the air in Ann Arbor because we were all there too. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, like, most of us were Barca fans, but just the energy and like I feel like we came together like as like a footy collective on that trip as well. Like it kind of inspired us. Like we saw all the fans. Um, obviously, we saw a lot of Napoli tan. And um, yeah, to see you guys kind of grow from that spot where we were also there too is it's pretty crazy. Yeah, hey, that's awesome. Um, that was a good time. Was that your guys' oh, first uh, live Napoli game you guys been to? No, no. no? Mine, mine, yeah. It was your Steph, first, yeah. Yeah, Steph. Steph, you had good seats there. You were, you you didn't sit where we sat. Yeah, you sat like, like the by, behind the bench. Yeah. yeah, behind the bench. Thanks to Steph and his brother, we were actually able to track down Napoli's uh, hotel and we met the whole team. Yeah, yeah. 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 how was, was that like? Crazy. Yeah, I think, uh, <laughs> it was cool. We met like Mertens, uh, Tommaso, and Senior. It was a really cool experience. Nice. That was amazing. Ancelotti. Jeez. Oh, yeah, that was that bad. Was, yeah. Ancelotti was manager. Yeah, yeah. yeah and we literally didn't know back then. <laughs> uh, we thought he was going to bring us the Champions League, <laughs> but. That's another story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and with Napoli fans in the GTA, like you said, obviously it's not the most supported club. Like especially Italian club, right? Like it's mostly Juve fans, I feel. Um, a lot of Inter fans, a lot of Milan fans. So I feel like with the Napoli fans, it's not big, but it's so tight knit. Of course. And yes. and you guys are a very like like well gathered community. Like and you guys are active too. Like I see all you guys, like Mo, Mo Salad. Yeah. Like you, you guys are all like characters and like you guys all have like different impacts on Twitter, which I think is dope. But how did you guys become Napoli fans in the first place? I mean, for me, it was kind of the typical story from father to son. Mm -hmm. It was passed down. Um, funny enough, when I was a... <laughs> so <laughs> this is going to put me out there. I've said it before, so it's already out there. But I was a Milan fan for my first year. Jeez, the switch Out up. there. It was out there. I loved Pirlo. I, I loved love that Pirlo Milan too. team. That's fair, bro. So... To me, I was <clears throat> going for them, but I didn't really understand football mm -hmm. at that time. I was six years old. I That's mean, fair. like, what could I understand? Yeah, exactly. I just knew, oh, I like this, how this guy plays. He's really cool. Mm -hmm. I want to be like him. Yeah, Milan had a great team. And Milan had, I mean, come, they yeah, just the won the Champions League, League and all that. So I liked a lot of players on Milan too. Yeah. When I was younger. So I was a Milan fan, but then. Mm -hmm. Things started to change. So my dad, at that time, Napoli, unfortunately, was in Serie B. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't really watch Napoli games. And um, I remember when they got promoted to Serie A in 2007. It was a 2007 season. Yeah. And um, the first game that they show was a Napoli game. I, can't, I think it was Napoli-Verona. What I can't remember. It was some some team. It was like Udinese. Udinese. It was some yeah. team. I don't know. But it was Napoli was playing, and my dad was in front of the TV, so ex like a little kid again <laughs> to watch this to watch them play, and I I just got downstairs, didn't know anything, sat down and watched the game, and even then watching them getting promoted to Serie A and seeing how the stadium was, I could kind of understand the atmosphere there, but I didn't really understand the culture. Right. Yeah. That wasn't until I went to go watch my first game at the San Paolo that year. No, the year after. So uh, then the San Paolo, now the Maradona. And it's an experience that I, I it's indescribable. It, I, I don't know even how to describe <laughs> it. Emotional, bro. I am. Yeah. No, I am. Like, I cried. And I still, like, I, I cry when I think about it now because you go into that stadium and it's just, loud it's just loud everyone is Definitely. so crazy yeah. over this one team it's like a, it's like a love between mother and son it's indescribable you cannot separate it and you can just see like when napoli scored a goal grown men who'd never known each other crying giving each other hugs you know everyone in sync with the cody and all that it's just when you get involved in it and you experience it for the first time you, I fell in love. I caught the bug, and it was from that point forward. Eight year, eight year old me crying in the Sao Paulo because <laughs> I'm seeing a bunch of, old, of thirty other old men around me crying yeah. too. I'm like, this, this is me now. This is it. <laughs> and uh, I've been on that ride since. That's beautiful, nice. bro. That's good. How was the when you were going into the Napoli Stadium? Was it was that when the emotion kicked in, or was it when you were hitting like the stadium, the actual stadium? When part? you walk in. Like this through the gates. Like so, through no, the when you walk in and see the, like, when you go up, so the way it's set up is you go up through a tunnel. Yeah. There's stairs, and then when you look out, it's like a platform, and it looks into the field. 
It's when you see the field and everything around it. That's when it kicks it's in. It's the atmosphere. Yeah. It's crazy. And yeah. You're your chest. I'm thinking of what I'm feeling. Yeah, you feel it again. It's yeah. a visceral experience when you think about it again. That's why I'm like getting teared emotional. Because it's a visceral experience that you have. Absolutely. I, I can't find a better way to get that first passion for a club than that. Yeah. Like, that's unreal. How did you become a fan? I had no choice. <laughs> You're forced. Yeah. I literally had no choice. I got pinned down. Sure you guys support. noticed the guy that was, you know, sitting over there, like in chilling. That's my dad. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. My dad grew up uh, Maradona times. Mm. He followed Napoli all over Europe, everywhere. He probably almost died a few times following <laughs> Napoli, if I'm being quite honest. And uh, yeah, growing up, um, obviously Napoli went bankrupt at a point, but um, it's always been Napoli. Uh, my first game was probably, I think it was in, Napoli was in Serie B at that point. I was maybe like four or five years old. Oh, sure. I think it was Empoli, Napoli Empoli or something like that. Um, and yeah, basically I was the only kid, everybody, I, I still liked, you know, Messi, Ronaldinho, like growing up. Yeah. Everybody yeah. was watching Milan, everybody was watching Juve, mm. Barcelona. And I was watching, not even watching Napoli. Back in those days, you had to stream, uh, there's this uh, website called Telecapri. Okay. And it would basically be like like this. Like you would be watching the commentators yeah. at the stadium, but you're not watching the game. You're just watching <laughs> the commentators. <laughs> it's either, it was so, either that or you watched Rai and you just heard for the trombetta del gol and wait, hoping not, it was Napoli. Not that, even. When they were, when sometimes. They were in, when they were in third division, there was nothing. Oh, there was there nothing, that. yeah. So, yeah, I'm like, Dad, why are we watching these guys speak in the Sixth City? This is all we got. This, this is all we got. This is the only thing. So then I remember when we made it to, to Serie A that, that year, it was oh, unbelievable. My, my dad cried. I was yeah. like, so excited because now I could actually watch Napoli like it, like on TV, mm -hmm. right? But, uh, yeah, basically I had, had no choice. <laughs> but since then, like Carmine was saying, when you enter a stadium, I think if any kid goes to a stadium, you fall in love. You fall in love For with sure. the, any team, I, but Napoli is special. It's it's the only team in that city. So anywhere you go in Naples, even like in the surrounding area, it's Napoli, Napoli, Napoli. Yeah. The mm -hmm. whole city just revolves around that team. It's like embedded in the DNA of the whole yeah. team, uh, the whole city, I should say. It's like a big it's, family, right? It's unbelievable. And like, for example, we lost four nothing today. It, it, people are going to be really sad tomorrow, you know, getting their coffee. You're going to, you can see it in the, in the mood of the people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. It's bar none for passion, for sure. And, and awesome. that's something that, that <clears throat> separates Napoli fans from any other club. Like you said, only club in the city. Um, Serie C to Serie A, and you guys are there through thick and thin. So it's crazy. But I, I know you're the youngest of the group. Yeah. You probably have a different experience so, and like how you started yeah. supporting Napoli how'd that happen so growing up I didn't like my family's not really too much into soccer which is like crazy thing because now I'm like the biggest soccer fan mm -hmm. but I was pretty much from a young age brainwashed by Soleno and his dad we're like Jehovah's of, uh, <laughs> Mar Maradona's witness <laughs> I was pretty much just taught to like Napoli and hate Juve from a very young age. Jeez. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, so, yeah, and then from there, I just started liking Napoli. Like, I really liked the fact that it was, like, no one else liked Napoli, so I kind of like being that outsider. Like, I grew yeah. up in Woodbridge, and everyone's a Juve fan. Everyone likes Milan, Inter, and yeah. there, I never met anyone until, like, the club and obviously Serrano that liked Napoli. So I really like that feeling <laughs> of, like, being, like, different, being, like, the outsider kind of squad. And... That year when Sadi was the coach is when I really fell in love with it. A player like Mertens and Signe, it made me really like fall in love with the team, just how like beautiful they played back then. And just like even like the fans, just like it's very different. Like they're in Serie A, but they're such like a unique team compared to others, which made me really like fall in love with the team. Well said. Nice. That's beautiful, bro. Uh -huh. I, I, I want to I wanna get right into this question. Okay, obviously... Maradona is the GOAT of Napoli. Who is the second best player in Napoli history? It's like telling me what kid I like best. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to pick. There's a couple. Hamsik, Mertens, Insigne. Like second, like impact? Greatest. Whatever that oh, means to you. Yeah. Like, mm. like if Osiman and Cavada were to win this... This uh, city of season, would they be up there? Yeah, they would. They would. Uh, because honestly, I'll, I'll top three. Like, yeah, they would because nobody else before them were able to do it. So they automatically 
just get up there because of that 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 one factor. I'm, I'm sorry, Cavada is the closest thing we've seen to Maradona since. Yeah, he is. So 100%. I, I would have to be like, if they win, I would have to say Cavada Scalia. Like, guys. And they might win the CL too. <clears throat> yeah. I don't want to say that. Yeah. Big dreams, y'all. Big dreams. Even though we lost for nothing, for you know, Serie A, I'm confident. Yeah. yeah. Champions League, I don't know. Yes, I think yeah. you guys just have a good chance, man. We have a chance, but. You know, you saw today Milan still yeah. is not Different a, games, yeah. not a yeah. bad. They have their their players back. Uh, they're fully fit again, more well, mostly, and they do have the Champions League pedigree. And you know, there's certain shirts in that competition that when you put them on, they they have a little bit more weight. For and, sure, bro. For AC sure. AC Milan is, you know, how many Champions League was seven? Seven. seven. Yeah. That's you know, that's some Champions League pedigree. Like you got to sure. respect that. Um, but yeah, it would be a dream if Napoli won the Champions League. <laughs> Even if they made the Champions League final, I don't know. I might have. I might need the defibrillator. <laughs> getting up there, but but, but, be but what, what do you think would be bigger, Napoli winning Scudetto or winning Champions League? Oh, Champions League by far. Yeah. Champions League, but I mean, Scudetto. Yeah, like uh, we're so happy for that. We've been waiting so long. But Champions League, come on, dude. Champions, no. Champions of Europe. Yeah, like what are you saying answer. over there? Scudetto, man. No. Yeah. Scudetto. Scudetto. Really? Come on, Scudetto. Think about think the Champions League is it okay. The Champions League is the Champions League, of course. But never in a million years would I expect Napoli to be in a Champions League final. I know. Le- yeah. They have a good opportunity yeah. this year. Yeah. And it's it it'd be amazing to win. But we always have a fighting chance in the Scudetto. And okay, this is a bit of a rant now, but <laughs> Go ahead. the 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 years of can I swear on here? By yeah, the way? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. No, I just wanted to make sure. The years of shit that we took <laughs> being in Serie G, Serie B, Serie A, losing, 2018, whatever happened there, everything, all the fans going against us, everything going against you, winning a Scudetto is a big slap in the face to everyone else that yeah. makes me happy. So that's why a Scudetto is always... It's going to happen anyways. We're it's going to happen stop. anyways, but that for me right now, a Scudetto is better oh, than a Champions a Scudetto, League. Scudetto, I'm happy. Of but course, I. How wouldn't not you? For any, not for any. <laughs> I mean, I'm, sorry I'm, no, I'm upset. We want to score that. Don't we? <laughs> I'm sorry to use your team as an example. Go ahead. That's fine. But obviously, okay, just champions of Europe. That's amazing. It's great for Italy. Yeah. But after all, like, you know how it takes to how much money people spend to like look. Juve, they bought Ronaldo to win Champions League. They've been dying to win Champions League. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, when Napoli buys like you know some random guy from Georgia and, <laughs> and they win the Champions League, you know. <laughs> That, I think that you know maybe it's burns people's asses a little bit more in my opinion. Maybe yeah, yeah that'd be unbelievable. Uh, what do you and, and, then, and then just to have, like, just to be in the conversation with all those other clubs, those other big clubs, like you know that have. Oh, you're in the conversation. Yeah, you're in the conversation yeah, in the for conversation. sure. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a that's a small like, yeah. group of teams. I guess right? I'm petty. I don't know. I guess I'm. That's <laughs> no, just I can, me. I can see where both of you are. It makes sense. Yeah. But the Champions League. I mean, like, like you said, you stuck through it thick and thin, took all the shit in the world. And then you finally come out on top. I mean, to me, that's absolutely. But like being coming up on top of Europe is like even more of like I feel like I, the world. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I feel like are. I've suffered enough that I deserve that. I'm sorry, <laughs> Fair I'm enough. Be, I'm no, be, you're yeah. right. I guess <laughs> okay. selfish. Yeah, you've convinced me. I guess break, break the tie trophy. Here we go. Okay. It's Champions League has to be. Yeah. So, gotta be Champions League. I agree. It's Champions League also because first we never won it before, so it'd be our first time. Yeah. And we have two scudettos, and it's also the fact like. Even in Champions League, there's still other Italian teams in it. So it's like we're still beating those top Italian teams yeah. anyways. You have to get through and the Milan Giants. Same thing. And like just to be like the face of Europe to me is like such like a big impact. Like everyone always knows who wins Champions League. It's like one of the most televised matches. And I feel like even for Napoli as a whole, I feel like if we win Champions League, it would also bring like a, a large amount of fans in. And it's like a big like underdog story. So I mean like... For me, a hundred percent, it's the Champions League. That would be a movie. Fair enough. <laughs> it would be literally movie. this season if, if they if they you know they're probably gonna win this Scudetto. If they win the Champions League, s- like someone make a make a movie, make a film. Thank God, bro. Okay, Netflix, know, like, Amazon, like, bro. Yeah. yeah. Let me sure. let me ask you as a follow up to that. So obviously, Napoli have a huge lead in Serie. A. They haven't mathematically won, obviously, but it's a huge lead. If you were offered or told. You're gonna lose this Serie A lead somehow and not win Scudetto, but it's ensured you win the Champions League. Are you taking that? Mm, no. <laughs> really? I want my Scudetto. Ensured you win the Champions League. I want my Scudetto. I want my Scudetto first. Oh, that's me. Awesome. <laughs> That's really it's tough. It's tough, but I don't. Do you want a Scudetto first? Okay. I want my Scudetto first. Like, say if 
say if there was like a little point gap, like say if Napoli was like two points in the lead, then I'd say sure. But the fact that we would have to choke a 17 point lead, everyone's gonna be talking about that. We would be, oh, oh, sorry, hold on. That, I, got, I must have misunderstood the question then. So, like, we'd have to lose every, yeah, yeah. oh, no, then Champions League. I must have misunderstood the question. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, I'm, I'm confused now, too. <laughs> no, I'm you confused by your answer. Because I, I thought it was like, it's just like clean slate, like whether you just want no, Champions no. League for next season or no, 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 no. this season. This season, you have to. You're at the points where you are now, but okay. at the end of it, you, you you come second place. Okay, no, 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 Champions <laughs> League. No, it makes a difference. I thought it was next season. No, no, no. no okay, like, I'm dizzy. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the game I, like, got me messed up. Champions I don't know. League is still like a Champions League, but yeah. the fact that we would like toss that, up yeah, a okay. lead like that, like yeah, I mean, really watching weeks of losses, like starting. Yeah, no, no, no. Sereno's right. I don't want to. That'd be bad. That'd be the worst. We'd get chirped. Yeah, yeah. stress levels after yeah. every game losing would just be going up and up and up. Yeah, and, be like, yeah. and then no and then way. plus we have a, a super like big drought because like nobody expects us to win the Champions League. That's why like I would feel like when when the Scudetto at that point. Yeah, right? yeah. But, yeah. Oh, that's a hard question still. <laughs> be no. happy either way, but I don't know. No, when you put it that way, I don't want to see a team. Seventeen points is what? It's uh, five games and a bit. Like with ten left, they'd have to with lose. With ten every left, you have to lose every game. That's gonna be the biggest blow up story, the biggest bottle story in ever. Yeah. No one's ever gonna it's talk about it. It's gotta be up there, bro. Probably the worst, be best team of all time. Yeah, exactly. You'd so, have, like the Monstars would have to come. Yeah, and just throw out <laughs> the whole team's talent. So putting it that way, I th- I genuinely thought it was for next year, but yeah, no Champions League. Uh, I just hold on, no screw lose that though. Yeah. Lose lose the Champions League. Yeah, I'm I'm yeah, getting yeah. myself confused. I'm no, that's okay. I got you. I the got game you. the game screwed me up today. <laughs> you you agree with that, Trophy? Yeah, I agree with that. To, to lose that many games in a row would be horrible. I've been yeah. heartbroken too many times. Like <laughs> the Fiorentina game last year against Empoli, can't pull the lead. Yeah, yeah. But Napoli loses a game every three months, and I'm like, like I'm distraught right yeah. now. I don't know how to. Yeah. It's one I don't know how to cope with it. It's like I don't, I don't, I'm not used to it. Like, imagine losing like now five, six, and forbid. Yeah, God forbid. It's okay. I, I got the Leafs to lose games. For yeah, me. you got those. <laughs> on the, on another team. I have another, another question. Let's say. Cavada goes on to win the CL, and he goes on to st- stay at Napoli for his career. Can he overtake Maradona at any point? Or is that impossible? No player could ever do that. No player. No, no chance. Yeah. Maradona, Maradona's God, yeah. He's God. Maradona's Maradona. Maybe, he's always, maybe Cavada Skelly is the Messiah, you could say. He's <laughs> yeah. The second Son coming, of God, bro. The son of God. <laughs> Jesus. But uh, Maradona's God. That's it. That's Fair enough. Fair there. enough. Can maybe complete the Trinity, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> with Aussie men. No, like you have Fonda putting into context. Spirit. I mean, what Mara, what Spirit. Maradona did at that time. You know, nineteen oh, eighties Napoli, the city, isn't what it is today in twenty twenty three. Napoli, the Napoli nineteen eighties is where you get all the stereotypes where you you hear about Napoli, dirty Calera. crime rate and like all all that sort of stuff. Like earthquakes Napoli was like in a bad spot. Like in the 80s. well, in the eighties, they had an earthquake, cholera outbreak, and like crime all over the city. Jeez, so was it was, really yeah, wow. they they it really saved them pretty much. Like exactly, in many ways. The and more, even the morale, like right, like yeah, the city with, with Maradona, one the be- the best player of all time, in my opinion, going from Barcelona to Napoli in a deal that nobody expected. And then winning uh, Europa League, essentially it was a Europa League, mm-hmm. and two Scudetti. I mean, like that the 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 effect that it had on the city really turned it around. Like that's that in history, if you look at history, that's the turning point of the city of Napoli to become what it is today. Sure. And what it is today is one of the one of the leading tourist spots in in Europe, right? And it's it's not what it's used to be in the past. It's not. It's not its past anymore. It's becoming an up and coming. Um, I don't know how to describe. It. It's just it's it's like becoming. It's, it's a, not just like a spot where people just stop to go to like a mouth. People yeah, actually, like planning staying. to stay around like Naples. Yeah, but um, to go off on like the Europa League thing, <coughs> what many people don't know, or you know, maybe a lot of younger fans don't know, in the eighties, the UEFA Cup, which is not the Europa League, was kind of like the Champions League. Like yeah. Napoli had yeah. to beat Bayern Munich. They had to be like. I think Madrid, like the yeah. big teams played in in the, yeah, in the, the Champions Cup. League. Like back then, it was only the teams that only the team that right? won the league. That's it. It was mm-hmm. a totally different competition. There was no group stage. It was like it was like one game, and that's it. One yeah. game knockoff. Like to win the Champions League was like it wasn't formatted like how it was now. Like there was a lot of pedigree in in the in the UEFA Cup. So mm-hmm. it's not like oh you know Maradona won a uh, Europa League. Yeah. He won, won a UEFA Cup. Won a UEFA Cup. Like, yeah, and that was a huge thing for Naples. Like in the, in the nineties, like that was crazy. 
Yeah. He, uh, yeah, uh, he's God, he's God, basically. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a good way to describe um, greatness too, like impact, right? Of course. Okay, now going off of, we're gonna say this season didn't happen yet. Now you guys lost Koulibaly, Insigne, uh, Fabriano Ruiz, Ospina, and there was probably others that I can't, I can't remember right now. Were you expecting this season to happen? No, no, never. What were you expecting? Like, where were, yeah, were you finishing? Realistic, like, coming to the season, what position did you guys think Napoli were finishing? Third and fourth. Somewhere third between fourth. that. Yeah, third so and fourth. The usual area? The usual area. I had an yeah. open mind because, you know, Cavada's schedule was exciting. Like, yeah. I'm like, okay, they're going to be young. They're going to be fun. We're, you know, don't be too hard on them. You know, I'm sure they'll play decent enough, like, to maybe make top four. But, uh, yeah, nobody could have ever expected like this. Like, uh, just every every position to hit the way it hit. Yeah. You know? yeah. Kim Min Jae, you know, oh, unbelievable. Jay. Like, I feel like he's had, like, the maybe the greatest impact on the team. Like, from, really? You yeah. Know? Yeah. Defensively, like, I mean, today we lead four goals. Yeah. But yeah. He was responsible for a few goals there. But <laughs> besides that. To be yeah. fair, in, he just came off international break and said that he was exhausted. I'm not sure why he would even play if he's exhausted. But that's another maybe topic. But. Um, yeah, Kim Min-jae has been unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've we've only conceded what fourteen goals the whole season, like up until well, today. Well, up until today, so like <laughs> it's crazy. D- defense wins you championships at the end oh, of the for day, sure. right? Um, yeah, no, we could have never expected this. Yeah. yeah. Did you expect this trophy? Yeah, I expected worse than them. I expected like top six. Really? <laughs> I kind of set my standards low, just so I didn't get too disappointed. <laughs> and I just had like top six and what kind of what I thought. Because I also did think like certain teams that are doing poor, like UV and stuff like that, I did expect them to do much better than they're doing. Right. And yeah, I expect like a top six finish. And I kind of knew, I my expectation was that we would start the season kind of slow and then we would pick it up because I knew Kavara's talent. I knew a lot of these players are young and they had time. And even now, I'm still stunned how quickly someone like Kavara just settled in. Yeah, It's not easy to it's do. Not, no. yeah, he has that superstar mentality. That's why he could fit right in. It. It's yeah. not like he was coming from the French League even. Right? This guy's coming from, yeah. like, Batumi. Like, yeah. It's like a demo <laughs> Batumi. They for Zenit for a little bit. This guy's yeah. playing, like... Oh uh, yeah, Zenit I guess was a little bit of a step up, but like so relatively no, like unknown. even then, yeah, unknown. Even no. then, yeah. Football, like it's crazy. Like the fact yeah. that someone can come from a league like that and just easily transition to the Champions League and mm-hmm. Serie A is yeah. And were you un- guys almost uh, unheard of, right? Were you guys uh, <clears throat> split the NRL at the beginning of the season? Because I I heard I saw a lot of <clears throat> things on Twitter before before the season started that they didn't like Spalletti. Spalletti and for at me, yeah, yeah, because li- we had Ancelotti. For two, three years? Two, three years? Can't remember. Three years. Ancelotti? Ancelotti, yeah. A year or two, and then we had a, a year. And then we a year uh, Gattuso. A year and a half. Yeah. He did the half of the last season. And yeah. And then it was, so in the last four seasons, you never really had a coach that could stay in and implement the system. Yeah. There was no oh. mentality. Napoli was lost for a couple seasons. So it's like maybe so, Saudi, right? Since Saudi, yeah, exactly. So g- having a coach like Spalletti come in, though, I know a lot of people said, well, he hasn't won anything in his career and all that. But yeah. Spalletti, if you look at his, his resume and what he's done in the past, he's he's revolutionized the game in some in many ways. Mm-hmm. He was the first one to use a false, uh, not one of the first ones, but he was like one of the ones who brought false nine to Italy with Totti, with yeah. that Roma team, right? Yeah. He... he is a brilliant manager. He knows what to do. He won with in near in Russia was Zenit. Zenit yeah. Was Zenit, right? Yeah. So he has won a, a league and he knows what to do to win, but he hasn't won any of the top leagues. Regardless of the fact that you need to have stability in the squad. You need to have somebody there who has a clean cut mentality who has to build the team around his parameters and then it's going to work. You just have to wait it out. Yeah. I mean, I didn't expect it to be so quick. Yeah. <laughs> it was really fast. It was a year. Um, but I just knew that if you hold on to him, it was going to be a rough. Pa- it was going to be a rough patch, and it's very easy to get rid of a, a manager. But you just have to stick through it and trust them. And yeah, he ended up showing us what he has. Really, at the end of the day, so. Yeah, no. yeah spell at the end for me. Uh, I mean, I was spell at the end just because I didn't really see any like replacement that I would have thought to be an improvement. But also, what Carmen said, uh, you know, it's kind of been like a revolving door with Napoli, so it's good to have that consistency. 
I mean, Spalletti isn't perfect. Like sometimes, you know, his approach to games can sometimes be be off. Like today, like, like today, today. like yeah. you know, he's he's kind of stuck in his way with substitutions. Like he, sometimes he doesn't make substitutions at the right time. But um, overall, he's been okay. This he's really good. I guess you could say this yeah. season. Also, sorry, um, another thing with Spalletti too is that he has to be the head. He has to be the leader. Yeah. So when he has somebody in the locker room that. Is is kind of like a foe for him to be that leader, like Totti, Icardi, all those guys, and even with Napoli, Insigne, Mertens, those guys were also leaders. But he having that little bit of tension is where Spalletti has his faults mostly. Now he has a team where he doesn't have any of those guys that have those strong personalities. No big egos. So he can really exactly. So he yeah, can really he's, take care he's of the, it. the head of everything. Yeah, yeah exactly. So that was another like another flaw with Spalletti that I forgot to mention before. But yeah, go on. Yeah, no, with a young team it works. Like yeah, how Napoli has right now. But yeah, with Eagles, you've you've seen it like, and in Italy they talk about a lot how like when when Spalletti goes to a team like the captain or like the big te- you know the big player always kind of leaves the next year because mm-hmm. they usually butt heads right. right. Like, he he's very. Uh, I mean, if you ever heard Spalletti talk, he sounds like almost like a like a like a poet like, yeah. like a sounds pri- like a priest like sounds a, priest, like a, like a, like a sermon, sermon. Yeah, like he's, <laughs> he needs to be the voice like he needs to be what people listen to so mm-hmm. uh, you know that's with this team it works because you know you got kids and they're they, they're gonna listen to them and they've bought in yeah for sure and i think that's the big thing with any coach if you have the team that buys into your system you're gonna probably have a successful coach and i think napoli's uh done that and they've done that through good attacking football and they, they want to attack all the time today against milan it looks like they didn't want to attack, and that's probably why they lost four nothing. They didn't play their style. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's maybe Spalletti trying something you know new, maybe doing something different, leaning up into the Champions League. Um, but whatever it is, I don't want to see it ever again. Jeez. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> but for the most part, he's been amazing this year. Yeah. So we, you know, we'll give him a little bit of slack. He think he's earned it. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, obviously, fantastic season for Napoli, and there's two revelations at the center of it Osiman Cavada who do you guys think is Napoli's best player Osiman or Cavada between them two who is it don't, don't point at me man Come I can't on. figure this out Cavada <laughs> Scalia 100% yeah why, why? <sighs> well I mean without, look at all the Osimans go I mean Osiman yeah. gets to some like he gets to them he gets on the end of them but mm. Cavada makes magic I'm sorry he's the playmaker like you know everything goes through him basically like or most of the success will come through him uh, and then you know they make they they, they kind of, they complement each other. So you know I'm not, not to say that Ozzyman's like it's close. Like it's like I, I would say like one A one B, but Cavada is one A because he makes things happen. You know he makes space for Ozzyman. He finds him. and then Ozzyman it's not easy to get to like you know 2.65 yeah, meters bro. in the air and yeah. get into a ball. Yeah. You could see kind of today they were throwing it up there and thinking that Ozzyman. Yeah. Was to be um, fair, Osiman makes yeah. space for Cavada when he opens up. Of course. And then Cavada has that. He's going to yeah. beat the guy one on one. He's not. Absolutely. Yeah. He's not going to get taken out. So with no. Osiman there, they kind of, yeah, they are. They complement each other. They're, they're, no, they're perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> the I don't know. So, um, you have one? I got it. You got one? Go ahead. So for me, I agree. It's Cavara. Like, Osiman's an incredible player and stuff like that. And they do, like, as he said, they work really well together. But. F- for me, with Kavara, the difference is like that he could do it on his own. Like he could create in a game when nothing's going on. He like his dribbling, his speed, his his strength. Like you've seen multiple times throughout the season where he scored those goals where outside the box he's dribbled past like five mans where he kind of just creates the goal all like himself. Like with Osiman, Osiman's a great player, but most of his go- goals come inside the box. It's not like Osiman needs that pass. Osiman doesn't like run through the whole team and score Usually. most of the time. Usually, he doesn't. Yeah. Like this season, I'm pretty sure he has zero goals outside the box. Like he needs that someone to create that goal. So that's why him and Kavara work uh, very well together. Yeah. They make, they make, like I mean, said, they make space for yeah. each other. Yeah. Yeah, he has zero goals outside the box, but I don't expect my striker <laughs> yeah. to always. Oh, he's yeah, he's, he's to it's where he's supposed to score, right? Yeah, yeah I'm probably gonna have to agree with Kvada now that I'm hearing it and thinking about it even more. But yeah. I was really, it was a really close debate in my head with cool. Osiman because I mean, Osiman has made goals out of nothing. Well, Osiman, he 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 creates magic too. Like the, he scores goals that That's like the, the goal beat. against Roma. Yeah. Ball comes in, chest, knee, yes. bam! Like, <laughs> threw him to the floor. yeah. Like, how do you, how do you even, come up even, with that? Even that a, goal against Sassuolo, he's literally the, the angle line. is like 
from from let's say that's the post. This is the angle he scores from from yeah, the touchline. He like scored. I don't know. It's sometimes like, he'll, he'll get any ball. Sometimes the, the ball will another come, come another thing. Him, we'll have a defender all over him, and then I don't know where his legs appear. And he's <laughs> yeah, like the ball, and he's and he's gone. Or, or another one. Thing, that yeah, goal, the, um, in the uh, reverse. The reverse. And yeah, bro, he had Smalling draped all over him. He fought him off, and he's throwing oh, that Smalling amazing. That, no, but even remember crazy. the goal against Spezia. The ball's in the air. Dragovski's Drago- just looking at it. Ozyman just comes in, bam, from under, from behind him, and he scores. And he went, I'm like, what? And that's a straight, Carm, that's a straight vertical yeah, jump. Yeah, he jumped up. To, it was like two meters and, and a half. Yeah. That's unbelievable. And Exactly. So, that's yeah. magic. You guys are all saying Cavada, though. But I'm saying I'm making the debate now. Here's now here's the the Kavada portion of it. Yeah. Though Ozyman has his flashes of when he does brilliance and he scores Puskas winning goals, quite quite uh quite regularly. Kavada just has this aura around him when he touches the ball. It's like I don't want to compare him to Messi because Messi is just another planet of his own. But when Messi touches the ball, you're thinking, like, oh, what's he going to do next? Like you know something's <laughs> yeah, going to happen. You know right? something's going to happen. You're, you're on the edge you of your seat. You get excited. You get excited. And yeah. you'll, you'll see it in a couple of, like the game against Atalanta. He comes in. He has eight defenders around him. <laughs> and he scores with eight defenders by himself. Crazy. So he does stuff like that. He dribbles past like as if the, the defender's not even there. He has no fear. He has no fear. And Love that's it. another thing. He has no fear. He's good both on Offense and defense, he tracks back. He, does, he tracks back w- hard. He doesn't give up throughout the 90 minutes if you put him out there. Yeah. Just because of that factor, Kavada's probably al- just marginally better. And, and also, Kavada's younger. Like We're, we're kind of just seeing like the tip of the 21. iceberg with yeah. Kavada. Like, yeah, this, yeah. Is first, like, first this is his first season. Like, was he 21? Like, yeah, 21. And he just turned 22. But like this, oh, is, like, like, this isn't his peak yet. Right? Yeah. He just started. You know what I'm saying? Like, most players insane. hit their peak at, like, what, 26, 27? Yeah. yeah. This guy's going to get better, man. Hopefully. Honestly, yeah. no, I think so. He like, might be a Ballon d'Or winner. In the I think future. in the future, he's probably yeah, he, going to be a future Ballon I'm not going to say it's with Napoli. Hopefully it's with Napoli, but... He's probably going to be a future Ballon d'Or winner, like the way yeah. he plays. Like he's just, he has that like, that like you said, that aura, that confidence with the ball. It's yeah. it's unbelievable. Um, every time he gets it, you just think he's going to do something. Mm-hmm. Even, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. He could get it in the defense. You're like, okay, what's he going to do? <laughs> going to run all the way through the field, and he's done it before. Yeah, he has. Another Dribble thing. Team, another thing that he has too is what we in Naples call uh, Akatsima, Akatsima, which is something that. We've built our our team around like in the past in 2010, 2012. Napoli was a feared team, even though they had Manuele Blasi playing in the midfield. But people didn't want to play them because they played with Katsima. They played with with heart. Like they didn't care who was there. They're running right through you. It didn't like, matter who you were. It's like it's like grit. Like it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like a grit. Yeah, grinta. That's what it is. A little bit different. Yeah. A little bit different. Yeah. A little more angry. <laughs> exactly. Okay. okay. Undici Leone. Yeah. So the eleven lions is what they used to call them. And that's what you're seeing again now. And Kvada is an, ex- an example of that. I mean, like he, today we saw Undici Pego. Yeah, what are you going to do? 11 uh, sheep. You can, you can afford a bad game. <laughs> I think Kavada's dribblings like it's elegant and it's effortless. Yeah, it's, like, it's beautiful to see. But without Osiman today, or nothing. Uh, are, are you guys sure? <laughs> no, I, I see what you mean. Kavada is definitely like a better footballer. But would could you maybe say Osiman's a more important player for Napoli or no? Honestly, if I'm talking about important players, Lobotka is the most important to me. Lobotka Why? Kim. Yeah. Without Lobotka, you can't do what Napoli system, does. Yeah. He controls the game. So Lobot- to me, Lobotka is the most important player. I like yeah. that show. Yeah. I don't think Ozyman, like being out really affected Napoli too much today. I think... Even like from like a mental level, like, oh, we're entering this Honest- game without our... We've played, yeah, games, we've played man. games without Osiman yeah. before, oh, okay. and we've won them. Okay. Yeah, we had. So. Yeah, well, honestly, to, the, the only <laughs> yeah. the only constant like I could kind of compare like with this game is Napoli. Even not only this season, but in seasons past, usually after the international break, we usually get players that are injured. Yeah, and then we always usually lay an egg. Like we laid an egg against Inter after the World Cup. Um, was Lazio? Lazio wasn't after an internet. That was just a, that was just that a, was bad, a bad, game. Game. bad game. But that wasn't a four nothing game. <laughs> that was just that was a one nothing game. Not yeah, yeah. play bad that game. And Vecino scored a goal. He'll never score again in his life. So <laughs> like, yeah, like we laid two eggs this season. In my eyes, we laid an egg against Inter and we laid an egg against Milan today, and both after international break. And you literally have like your one, your one of your stars of the season coming out and saying that 
he's been dragged in the media in Korea, basically saying because uh, they don't think he's committed to the national team because he came out and he said, uh, "I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm mentally tired. I'm, I'm drained." Well, after playing the World Cup, doing all this stuff, he's like, uh, they season, made him. Bro. They made him play ninety minutes, uh, two games, ninety minutes, two friendlies. <laughs> so he's that's crazy. You know, yeah. maybe probably shouldn't have started today, but. You know, international breaks. I, I, to be honest, I hate them. I find it, I find it hard, I hate harder for breaks. Napoli because, I don't know, but they have a lot more players that are stars for their their national team because not none of their, your players really play for like big clubs. Yeah, so they're like the they're guys like, there. Like you have Korea, Mexico, yeah, yeah. so on, so on. I'm not gonna name all Serbia, whatever. But then you go to like Inter. They have like a couple players that are stars for their mm -hmm. teams. Not not a full eleven. Juve, a couple of their players. AC Milan, a couple of their players. So they're coming back. Pretty fresh, and you got yeah. Napoli. Kind of their players are playing hundred plus minutes yeah. in one week. That's insane. They're also far, like, and, and they're flying. Yeah, they're Kim flying has to go away. to like Korea. That's that's a that's like what, 10, 12 hours from Napoli. You know, like at least Europe. yeah. Then you got players that got to go to you know Lozano's got to go to Mexico. That's another that's ten hours too. You know, yeah. then, Actually, you have, then we have uh, Ozzyman in Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria is closer though, a little bit, but still, you know. Still travel off the continent. Still a lot of travel. Yeah, bro. still travel. Yeah. Travel and then they're playing a lot. Like yeah. they don't really get a they don't get a rest and then they're playing for Napoli as well. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, they have a tough. It was it was a break. yeah it was tough. Usually that's why I said usually. That's why I told you the today. International break. I know. That's why I told you today we're gonna lose. Nostradamus. <laughs> Nostradamus. Can't, it's out in the stars. Can't bet on Napoli after international break. I guess. <laughs> no, I literally don't. Don't do it. <laughs> so so would you guys say, Cavada is the best player in Serie? Yes. Hundred percent. Yes. Like head and shoulders above the next, or not head and shoulders because the second best is Osi, man. Okay. <laughs> so it's marginal. Okay. What do you think about that? This season, yeah. If Le sure. Leo had the season he had last year, this year, is he better than Cavada? It's close. Close. It is close. close. It is close. There's an argument to be made. I mean, you're gonna get a biased opinion from me, of course, but, but it's close. It's fair though because Cavada is yeah. playing. Yeah. He has who, what three player of the month and. Yeah, past three months. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. So, it's a. Cl I I don't even remember Liao's stats from last year, but uh, I don't remember them either. Yeah, but they were they were, they were pretty they good. Were they were okay. I think Kavada's already hit it. I think Kavada's yeah, already passed it. He's already passed yeah, it. So, awesome. yeah, I don't know. It's a close argument to me. Kavada's still better because, like I said, he plays with that that Grinta, that Katsima. He plays with he can that. Carry a team. He can carry a team, and he has. I mean, Leal did kind of... He carried them last year. He did carry them last year, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fair, fair enough. You know, play devil's okay, that's fair enough, yeah. To play devil's advocate. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. It's a good joke. Leal's a great player still. Oh, he yeah. hasn't had the same season this year as he did last year, but as you could see, he still is a player. Like, yeah, on, for sure. Yeah. Sure, for sure. Um, well, for next season, say you won everything. How do you upgrade this team? Are you are you picking? Do you have a specific player? Let's say right now, just in CDI. Is there one player in CDI yeah, that you would no. that you would pick? Oh. And I will go world. Okay, I thought you were asking like what team. No, let's start with Steph. I have, so I have Steph, a lot yeah. of opinions. Here. Like is, is there a player you want on this Napoli team? Uh, okay, so first off, any other right winger? <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> Not Politano <laughs> and Lozano. So who you grabbing? Ship them off, so eh? If it has to be someone from City I'd probably look at someone like Lookman, who's like third okay. top scorer in City Out. Yeah, that's a good show. Okay. Playing great. Also on Sassuolo, Lori Lorian. He's having a really good season as well. Yeah, good I would player. grab players like that who have already excelled in City A and like match the play style of the squad. So like mm -hmm. someone like Lookman has lots of pace on him. He matches perfectly with Kavara and Osiman uh, in attack. And then I would also say in midfield, I would want a little bit better depth because I, not that the depth is bad, but like second up would be someone like Ondombele. But like, I feel like we could have better. Like, for example, in center defensive mid, we all we have is Demme. And like, let's say someone got hurt. I don't feel comfortable with Demme playing in the Champions mm -hmm. League quarterfinal, semifinal. No, I, I agree with that. Is. Yeah. I mean, Demi, like, he's just lost his confidence. Like, he's not, like, a wasn't a terrible player. But, yeah, I, I agree. Like, the, the right wing is, like, the, weak the biggest, biggest weak point of yeah. Napoli. Like, and you could see it today. Like, the, they're terrible on the right wing. Yeah. Like, and it, it's not like I, there's a there's always this big debate on Twitter, like, oh, Politano, Lozano. I, I think they, no one. They, I think they both 
are pretty bad. Just like, shit both of them out. Average? Yeah, <laughs> but to be honest, I like Lozano because like he'll have the like you know the odd like yeah, you know, yeah. the brilliance. He's very direct. Too. Exactly, yeah. and he's direct, and he's good at even like swinging the ball. And Politano, it's like every time you know he's gonna cut in on the left. He lost his pace <laughs> and, a lot cut, too. and that too, yeah. he's really slower yeah, than Lozano. You need the the pace to keep up with um, Ozyman and uh, and Cavada Scalia. Uh, my ideal right wing. I mean, not probably not gonna happen, but I would love to see like a, a Chiesa on that position. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe you know if uh, some yeah maybe goes after wrong. one more injury. Then. No, no, no. I mean, like, like if you know, I've said if you've asked to sell players when they go down, if they go down. <laughs> yeah. Bro, when they finish outside the Champions League spot, I'm, I'm joking. He's gonna dip out of there. Um, but in all seriousness, I, I like Chiesa. I mean, it would be amazing. I think he'd play great on Napoli. In oh, this he team. would. That's right. But uh, yeah, anybody else but <laughs> Politano and Lozano. Yeah, so for me, it'd be, um, well, Steph picked all my picks. Those are exactly <laughs> the guys I was Those thinking. Those are good picks. Look, man, Lorient, uh, Chiesa's a good shout, too. A, so, like, one Chiesa. of those guys, like, if, let's say for me, if I were to do it, I'd ship off both Lozano and Politano. Um, because I can't stand to see them anymore. <laughs> but <laughs> that's just a, that's a personal bias. But. If I'm bringing somebody in to replace, I'd bring in Lookman and then someone like Orsolini, like a, a role player, yeah, just to yeah. get him in every once yeah, he, once in a while. He and has he's, some glimpses of he has some glimpses of yeah, crazy, like yeah, madness. exactly. So you have something like that where you have you have your main guy, but you can slot somebody else, and that's what Napoli has done this year really well. Is that you have your main guys, but you can slot somebody in, and it doesn't really make a difference. To the team as a whole, mm -hmm. like we've seen games where most of the time we're playing with Kim Ratmani, but then we'll play with Juan Jesus and Ratmani, and it's still a good output. We'll play with Mario Rui or Oliveira, and it's still good output. Well, Oliveira has some problems in attack. He is not as good as Mario Rui. He's been a little bit better defensively, but you can see all around uh, when when Napoli has this depth of a team you ha you want to keep with that depth you want to keep going with that depth if you're taking off let's say Zielinski you play in Don Bele after it doesn't really affect the balance of the team so yeah the right wing for sure you get like a Lukman Laurient or uh, and then a role player like an Orsolini or no other names coming to mind but those are my three then you sign in Don Bele from Tottenham because I think you can get him for a cheaper price than what they're asking yeah, why not I'll right. Him in yeah, I and I think Ndombele player, really man. likes. He, oh, he's an amazing player. He's Just an amazing lazy. player. That's the only problem. Lazy. No stamina too. He's yeah. he's gotten better though. Since Spurs, yeah. He, he, yeah, he's gotten better. Like Spalletti. Another thing with Spalletti, he's a midfielder's coach. Mm -hmm. He's a midfielder's dream because you can tell. Like even with Lobotka and Gisa, Lobotka was dead and gone with Gattuso. He didn't touch the field at all. Demi. It was all Demi. It was all Demi. And Demi was good with Gattuso. Good. I'll be honest with you. But when when um, Spalletti comes in, he revamped. He I don't know. He revamped the midfield, and Lobotka has turned into Iniesta. Apparently, like he, the guy does not miss. Then you have Angisa. Angisa is a very solid midfielder, really good uh, box to box midfielder. Today he sucked, but yeah. everyone has a bad game. So it you have happens. all these guys. Then in Dombele, <clears throat> Almas, maybe one more midfielder you can bring in. Uh, name. I'd probably keep it within Serie A too. Somebody that um, is proving themselves in Serie A. I'm trying to think of like like a Fratesi, some something like that. Mm -hmm. You get those guys, young guys that have proven themselves already. Or uh, Samuel Ricci, he's a really good uh, midfielder as well. And you can slot them in because they could also play in a Lobotka role, so you can just move them around accordingly. Once you get that, you only need two or three signings. Napoli's good as it is. You don't. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. We also forget that Raspadori plays on Napoli too, right? Yeah, but Raspadori's he's been like hurt left, for a little while. Left yeah. wing striker, yeah, yeah. all that sort of stuff, True. right? So Ma imagine we we we're talking all this crap, and then like Politano scores the goal to win the championship. <laughs> <laughs> That's that? Mario Rui. We've or already Mario made that. We've already made the bet on that. Mario Rui's to score the winning goal. Yeah. Imagine. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Now like like if Politano or Lozano wins like the Champions League with a goal, I, like I would give them a lifetime contract. I wouldn't <laughs> sign it. Stay forever. I, I, I agree. But yeah, I speaking of transfers, do uh, you guys think in the summertime we'll see either one or both of Kvara and Osimhen leave if a big money comes in or no? No chance. I don't think so. Uh, if anything, maybe maybe Osimhen. Yeah. He's been for a little while. And and what's the minimum you would take for Osimhen? That you're like I'm okay. One fifty. One fifty minimum. One fifty. Like they'll talk. 
I mean, like yeah, <laughs> 150. I, Darwin Nunes is going well, 100. 100? 100? Come on. Like, you might be able to get a little on. bit more. You, a little bit, though. A lot of bits. <laughs> you can get a lot of bit more. I'll be honest. I don't feel like, uh, like he's hard pressed to leave. He isn't. They're not. Kavada is definitely not leaving. People can just well, like. Yeah. Kavada is, yeah. uh, I think before 2025, he's not moving. No. Why would he? You're, you're in like the perfect spot to grow. Yeah, exactly. You know I'm saying you're in Naples, you know, it's not like in another maybe bigger squad. Like if, you know, you have a little bit of a bad run of form, they're already, you know, calling for your head and like you you, you just touch bench the whole, you know. Hold on. We do it year. too, though. Uh, we do it too. Uh, no, 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 no. Napoletani are not innocent, man. I we mean, hey, we we can. we stole Spalletti's car and give it back to him. <laughs> okay, so let's not let's not pretend no, we're no. saints on this. They one. stole his car and they said uh, we'll give it back to you if, if you, you leave. leave. Yeah, that's crazy. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Uh, I forgot about that. Bad times. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I mean. I forgot that, that was too funny. I kind of forgot. <laughs> what I was 150 mil for Osimhen is what you're saying. Sorry, 150 mil for Osimhen. Zero. I think Zero. a little bit. I think a little bit more. A little bit honest. more. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think they're in a rush to leave. Look, the the team is built for them. You know what I'm saying? Especially someone like an Osimhen, a striker. Like, you know that you have that chemistry with Cavada Skelia. Like, yeah. why not? You know, especially if you win, why not run it back and see where it goes? You know, yeah. build your your brand, so to speak, a little bit more. Because then if you make that big move and you're not successful. You can just like it can screw you over. Like you can just disappear, right? Like yeah. yeah but maybe, maybe a way Osiman's looking at it is like, okay, I'm about to win the scudetto. I did my job. I did a job that no one else has been able to do besides maybe like Maradona, right? True. I did my job, and uh, I think Maradona he said. I think he said. Maradona won too. But I, but I think Osiman said everything I do is for my goal to play in the Premier League. He obviously has yeah. ambition to play in the yeah. Premier League. He grew up. He grew up like like dude. If some say if I played for Manchester United, yeah. I grew up a Napoli fan. I'm gonna tell you, I, you know, I want to play for Napoli one day. This guy grew up a Manchester United fan. Of course, he's gonna say I want to play in the Premier League. Yeah. It, it was his yeah. boyhood. Everybody wants to play for their boyhood club, sure. right? Yeah. Even if my you know my boyhood club's TFC, I, I want to play in the MLS. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that, but <laughs> obviously you, you you're gonna want to play for the team that you grew up supporting. Yeah, or in the league that you grew up watching, right? Like. For most Italian kids, we all grew up watching Serie A. It has a special place in our hearts. We're going to want to play there. And I think it's fair, you know, for athletes in any sport to have ambition to want to, you know, win in other spots. Like, uh, But it doesn't mean that he wants to go right away, I don't think. Yeah, they have lost time. They're young. Yeah, they're young, right? Yeah. But also, you don't want to, you know, mess up your career. you got to think about the longevity of your career, too. Yeah. That's another thing. Well, Ozzy means 20... For right now, turning twenty five. So I mean, I think one more season's fair. Well, I, well, win. I think it's well, yeah, it, well, yeah. Run it back. Let's see. We'll Let's see. That, though. They might yeah. take the the, the deal for the UCL, maybe. Well, well, not one. Mm, no, they might take no, the deal no, I proposed to you. No, 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 no. I I messed up. Don't listen to what I say. Um, what was I gonna say now? Oh, um. Ultimate, one more year, I think, is fair. T 25, going on 26. At 26 years old, you're going to be entering the prime of your career. If you want to go play in the Premier League, go right ahead. I mean, like, make that's money. that's yeah. the time to go out and make your the big money move. And also, like, I'm sure they look at the fact that Maradona has been, like, f like, so many years, and he's still, like, a, an icon in yeah. Naples. Mm -hmm. And why wouldn't they try to, you know, mimic that or solidify that, that destiny? Yeah. Like, not for anything, they're, like, for example, like a Real Madrid has had so many legends, so many stars. Yeah. And they're all legends, right? But like no nobody has the like none of them have the streets in Madrid. Like if you're a legend in Naples and you create a dynasty, you have the streets like forever. Makes like, sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. you're all like, over the place. Yeah, yeah. Ozyman's just realizing too. You'll never like, pay for a meal. <laughs> yeah, that's he a doesn't. good place yeah. to not pay for yeah, a meal. I know. He's telling me like <laughs> free cakes, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean Ozyman's realizing it he's starting to feel the like he, he's he's a demigod in that city with now that mask he, with that yeah with the mask you see the videos on instagram and all yeah, that like the cakes the, the, cakes, yeah. uh, the, the pizzas mm -hmm. the, the, Aussie the, the, Aussie the Aussie apartments Aussie they yeah. painted an entire apartment building as Aussie man that's crazy with the mask and everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> insane wild, video. Bro. you haven't seen, seen it no, haven't we'll, seen we'll it. show it to you yeah, it's crazy like, the top you of the building is it, yellow, the and then it, it's it's uh, they painted it all brown with the mask on it, Jeez, the blue man. jersey underneath. Like it's That's crazy. insane, it's unbelievable. Jeez. Yeah, Ozzy House, Ozzy House, Ozzy Casa. <laughs> <laughs>
The, oh. Nobody. He literally has the streets. Has <laughs> it's the a streets. legit thing now. Yeah. yeah. For me personally, I think now they have to keep their core. They got to keep Lobotka, Kim Min Jae, yeah. Osim and Kavada. I think they could replace if if, they, if needed. They, they could replace probably any other position, even a goalie. Meta had sure, a pretty yeah. bad game today, but uh, yeah. Meta's good when the other team doesn't have to take a shot. Yeah, <laughs> like they, they, I think they could. Good. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> and fair. maybe Di Lorenzo, I would keep there because he's the captain. Yeah, but he's 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 replaceable. Uh, but yeah, if they could, especially the money that they're going to be getting from UCL winning the league, like they could upgrade with keeping all these players. I don't Absolutely. think they, there's no need to sell them. There's yeah. no need to sell your stars. Sure, and, and like you said, with, with a Cavada Scalia, you know, I was even a. Fantastic striker, but if you put a you know an up and coming striker or you know a de- half decent striker, he's gonna score goals with Kavada. Yeah, sure. that'd be, yeah, that 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 would that'd be my be cool. ideal. Jonathan to be David honest, would be my one. ideal replacement. Like, it's kind of not like like for like, but I mean he's coming Different from players, Lille, but, but goal yeah. scorer. Nonetheless. He's up and coming, right? Yeah. Probably the right price point. How much would he maybe cost? Maybe forty. He wouldn't be that much. 30, maybe thirty forty. Yeah, think so. That low. It's a good pick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe a lot. He's, yeah. I don't know. Maybe fifty. Maybe 50. I don't probably. think so, man. 52, yeah. He's not going to be as much as when we bought Ozzy, man. Ozzy, man yeah. was like 70. 70, yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah. I yeah, mean, people was were saying the price tag was crazy at the time. Yeah. But it's bargain? justified now. It's a bargain. It is bargain. a bargain. It's a bargain. bargain. <laughs> but to be fair, he was scoring a lot of goals in Lille. He played. Yeah. He yeah. had played in uh, Germany as well. Like it, it wasn't like he was coming from nowhere. Yeah, like, I know. He scored goals in top in the top five leagues, you know? Yeah. yeah. And he had... he had everything. Like you could, you could see his athleticism. It was very raw, but as you're seeing now... A coach like Spalletti is able to take Unlock. that raw, uh, you know, material and or talent it, yeah. and turn it into this machine, right? Yeah. So, uh, who's to say that he can't do it again with a, someone like a Jonathan David, which yeah. would be great for Canada? And oh, sure, like, bro. Really like great, that. great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's like Canada, but yeah. Um, what was your guys' initial reaction seeing Napoli icon legend Insigne come to come to this city, our city? a wave of emotions i didn't know what to feel at first so funny enough when it was october october november something around that time i was uh at a nearby shop here and i was talking with some some people in that shop um and one of the guys leaked info to me he said insignia is coming to toronto he's signing for toronto fc exclusive eh yeah. Who is this guy? Yeah, is this Fabrizio is Romano you're talking to? Oh. <laughs> he might as well have been, honestly. Oh, can't expose our sources. I can't expose, yeah. <laughs> I honestly, honestly, if I wanted to say, I can't even tell you who it was. Jeez. I can't even remember who Top it was. Top secret, huh? He's fr- he was friends with somebody at TFC. He was he'd talking about the you, deal. but he'd have to kill you. I yeah, know. I know. <laughs> Be careful. Lock the door, now you can't leave. <laughs> but um, he told me this, and I looked at him, I'm like... Get fucked. Like, you're, you're not serious. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I, I was talking to them. I'm like, yeah, this, you know what this guy said to me? He's, yeah, he's seeing he's coming to TFC. It's like, yeah, right. Yeah, okay, <laughs> sure. And, t- and tomorrow pigs are going to fly. So <laughs> I didn't believe him until I went to Italy in December. Um, and I, I, I know a couple of people that are close with, with Napoli and all that. Yeah. And they were telling me in January when the market opens – Insigne is going to Toronto. He's signing. Dang. There's no other way around him. Like, okay, stop it, guys. The joke's over. <laughs> like, what, what are you, what are you talking inside about? Joke. But I start to take it serious now, and I'm texting these guys. I'm like, he's coming to Toronto. Get ready. Lo and behold, January transfer market opens. First thing we see, Insigne to Toronto signed, yeah. and that was, man, like it was, it was bittersweet. I didn't want him to leave. Mm-hmm. I wanted him to stay and retire in Napoli, but it it was time for him to go. That's the other thing. Yeah, he wasn't wow, why a, do you say he that? He wasn't having a good season. He wasn't having a good season. And here's another thing they have to take into consideration. For 10 years, he was the poster boy. That's a lot of pressure. And knowing how Insignia is now after speaking to him for a little bit, he's very introverted. He's very to himself. Mm-hmm. And Napoli was forcing him to put to be in a position where he had to be that that poster boy, that face, where if things were going wrong, he was the one to handle the situations. There was a lot of pressure. If when Napoli wasn't doing well with Ancelotti that one season, he was going out. There would be hordes of the ultras outside their hotels, just like re- laying into them, and he'd come outside and have to try to calm them down and talk to them. 
And he did that for even before he was captain. He did that for years. And he got like, uh, imagine every day you can't even go outside your house because you're just going to get swarmed with people. Crazy. And they're going to have the, they're going to either lay into you or be your best friend. It's unpredictable. You don't know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a lot of stress. And, and he's not played on. And he's not played on. So not played on, they, they put, they put you to a higher standard, right? Like, everyone loves Mertens because Mertens didn't really have that pressure on him. Nobody nobody put that pressure on him. Yeah, but Mertens also has he's a, also different a different person, character. Different, different personalities. personalities. Yeah. Eccentric. Insignia isn't like that. So, you know, after 10 years of just constant, just that constantly, he needed a break. That's, that's all it really comes down to. And Toronto was a perfect break. That's, yeah, you got $15 million a year. How are you going to turn that down, right. first and foremost? <laughs> Second of all, he goes to Canada, which is like, you have to consider, everyone in Italy, the the dream is to go live in North America, Canada, USA. They want to they wanna go live America. there. I mean, yeah. oh dear. But that's that's why. what they want, you know, a better life in, in America. It's an old way of thinking, but yeah. it's kind of some, some, some ways they still think about that. So he... Comes to Toronto, one of the best cities in the world to live in, I think, right? $15 million a year. No stress. Goes outside, can take his kids to the movies. Nobody's going to bother him. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just a, a load off his shoulders. Now, is it the easy way out? Maybe. <laughs> but I'm not going to blame him for that. Because you put me in that situation, I say yes 10 out of 10 times too. Oh, so, fair enough. I mean... I was, I didn't, I don't think I, like, I registered for a few days. I didn't really sleep too much, like, because Insigne was, like, my favorite player, like, oh, okay. for Napoli for a little while. It was, like, Lavazzi, and then it went to Insigne. Jeez. Lavazzi. Uh, Lavazzi was amazing. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I understand it. Like, it wasn't really a footballing career choice, I guess. It was more of, like, a life choice, yeah. right, for his family, which is understandable. I was upset that it was in the middle of the season. Because at that point, Napoli was still competing for the Scudetto. And I think last season, Scudetto was a very winnable Scudetto. If you remember the title race, it was like everybody was losing. It's yeah, like yeah. If, if there was like any Whoever lost less. <laughs> and and Senior didn't have a great year. And, you know, who knows? Maybe he was distracted, not in the right place. And uh, I think if Napoli had a half decent, like, you know, half of what the team was this year, last year, I mean, Milan was good, but I, I think they could have competed and maybe yeah, won the Scudetto. Sure. So I, I was mad in that sense, but then also selfishly, I was you know excited because I get to go see him, you know, every week. Yeah. Which for a little while I did. He hasn't been really playing lately, but um, you know, having your favorite player in your backyard in North America is like a luxury, right? For sure. So, uh, it was understandable, and hey, in the end, I know some people still rag on Insigne. I don't understand why, because. It it worked. It couldn't have worked out better. Yeah. The guy's here. He's making his money. His family is happy. The guy who replaced them is good, is like um, an, an alien. Yeah. Like uh, <laughs> Kavana Skelly yeah. is un unbelievable. Napoli's probably gonna win the Scudetto. For the fans, I think it worked out great. I I'm not sure if you asked Insigne how happy he is. You know, the first year after leaving Napoli, winning the Scudetto, I'm sure he's. You know, I'm sure he doesn't have regrets, but I'm sure he probably wishes he was there for sure. Yeah, degree, but. Yeah, bitter, bittersweet, so to speak, I guess you could say. True. I seen that pic of you with seen you. I seen you with the shades. Yeah. How, how was that for you? It was, uh, it was a good experience. Special. So for me, when I heard when I first heard the news, I was kind of the same type of thing. It was like bittersweet. For me, like since I'm a young Napoli fan, the first kind of player I knew was Insigne. And that was like the first big player I knew. Like besides like Cavani and Lavezzi, it was like Insigne. And that's really when I started falling in love with Napoli. And... Um, yeah, at first, like, it was kind of like, like so I know I said, it didn't really set in. And, like, at the, at the, in the moment, I was kind of mad, to be honest, because I was, like, felt betrayed, kind of. <laughs> Even though, like, he's coming to Toronto, I get to watch him. I felt betrayed, like, that he would leave once again in the middle of the season. And I feel like that did have an impact on last year's season, but that's, like, another conversation. And, like, it was a cool experience seeing him, like, live at, TFC and stuff like that, but I just like also feel bad for the fact that he's not part of this team because at the end of the day, like a lot of some Napoli fans like rag on him or they like try and like kind of hate on him because he left. But like at the end of the day, if you were in the shoes, you would probably do the same thing. It's fifty million dollars. Yeah. And him now he has to watch from here. Ten years he spent his career there, never won the year after he leaves. 
Yeah, and tough. now, like thinking about it, I'm happy it happened because we got Kavara, and we're gonna everything, get Scudetto. And everything realistically, happens for realistically. If he was here, I don't think this happens because, like I, like we all argued, Kavara is the most important player in the team. Uh, he's so talented, and with Insigne, even if he stayed another year, he was just gonna keep regressing. He's at an older, older age, and yeah. the role he had was like too heavy for him to lift. That's and fair. now looking at him, happy that all that happened and hopefully he could bring TFC some the MLS Cup hopefully everything mm-hmm. happens for a reason I love that I feel bad for all of them to be honest like <laughs> not for the Mertens like Mertens I fucking stuff. love Koulibaly Koulibaly yeah. but yeah. Mertens was like a Napolitan like he was it like was. Yeah. The, he, he, he had the streets for like the longest yeah. while yeah, yeah, like yeah. he was like Neapolitan and this guy wanted to stay That that's what hurt the most is because he sad. wanted to come like he wanted not, yeah. not come he wanted to stay like he was willing to take less money like and yeah, like for a Mertens, like it hurts. The guy named his first born Cheeto. son Cheeto, which is like one of the most like popular like Neapolitan names. So Jeez. he like basically gave like his son to the city. Like it's crazy. It's like yeah, it, it hurt. Like thinking about it, like that hurts, right? Obviously, you know, it's, we're happy we're winning, but you, you feel for players, especially like I, I don't, I honestly never understood the Insignia Slander, like. You're talking about a guy that scored on the biggest stage for Napoli. He scored in the Champions League. He's won a Euro for Italy. He's like, he's cried for the team. He's like, you know, bled for your jersey. Uh, and he's been your captain. And he's Neapolitan. And, you know, for, for a Napoli Don, a fan to, to kind of shit on Insigne, for me, I don't think you're a really good fan. Because that's that's someone from your, your city. That's your ex-captain. And like I said, anybody who's willing to, like, give their all for the shirt cry that's you, you got to respect them and yeah all of those guys honestly like i know they didn't win this scudetto but they played a part in the build-up to this happening yeah and i know they're not going to get a trophy but if, if it was not for them we don't we don't arrive at this point right so so they're yeah. the first domino pieces that have to fall basically absolutely no but yeah. this is a these are dominoes that have been stacked, stacked from yeah 2004 on, man that's, it's been uh it's been a long time coming right but yeah. you feel for them for sure. Yeah, f- I mean, I can only imagine what they're thinking right now. I know if they're happy, but they're, they're, they're for, yeah. They'll I mean, probably be the when you guys lift the trophy, like in the stands. I hope so. Watch. Yeah, they will. They will for sure. I mean, Insignia, he's he's a Napoli fan. Mertens loves Napoli. Koulibaly loves Napoli. So, you know, it sucks to see Napoli do well now because you're not there to partake in it, but. Like Sereno said, not just them. There's 20 years of domino pieces lining up and falling down to reach to where we are right now. And to be fair, man, like in my eyes, like I know they didn't win the Scudetto, but man, like they, 92 points in a season. I know, like, man. It won you 14 out of the last 15 I don't wanna, Scudettos I don't at that get point. The, uh, I know, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> I don't want to get political on this. I don't want to yeah. get like, you Where know, are the tapes? Release the tapes. <laughs> scandalous <laughs> here. <laughs> but some audio tapes were missing around a few games. Uh, you know, a certain team. That's crazy. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, yeah. I don't know. But 92 points in a season wins you the Scudetto. Oh, easily. Every, yeah. 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 And I'm sure after that, I feel like that was kind of like a turning point for the team. Like, it's like... After that, like they probably think to themselves, well, you know, it's impossible. Yeah. We're not going to be able to do it. No, it was, it was, it was a mentality issue. Yeah, you saw After it. After that, it sh- they were shut. They shut down. Yeah. They shut down. They because if you can't win it, then when are you ever going to win it? Right. That's oh. so. You, you, it's, it's natural. You're going to shut down. You're going to. You're going to block they yourself. They put a block in their head. They yeah. put a block in their head, Absolutely. and that's why they're doing so well right now. Because you have a bunch of players. I mean, bar Zielinski, because Zielinski was still there at the time. Yeah. But that's only one and guy. You didn't have. There. Huh? And the ma- El Maestro. Maestro, I know, but he's he's omnipotent. You know, he's yeah. he's he's not of this planet. That he's guy. Not. <laughs> but um, yeah, you have a team now that like uh, what was it? Clear eyes, full heart, can't lose. Uh, the the remember the Titans? Yeah. yeah. They, they they don't have anything, any baggage. They don't have any of those mental blocks. They're free. They, they're free. Yeah. They just go out there and play, and that's what that's when it brings me back to that Katsima. Like it doesn't matter who's in front of you, they don't care. They yeah. just have to do what they got to do to get to where, where they need to be. Absolutely. The other teams, the teams before that, they they knew what they had to do, but they always had the second, the afterthought, 2018. That was, the, that was always playing it's in the back tough, of their man. head. And it's tough to go out to a big game and think, 
oh, what happened in 2018? And that's it. You, you have it in your game. you have it in your mind. Oh, we're gonna get screwed over. Yeah, pretty much. Exactly. More or less. But then fast forward to 2023, and it's looking like a Scudetto winning season. And I love it. I think it's great for Serie A. Um, Napoli, who haven't won since the 90s, Juve to not win again. I think it's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful it to is. see. No, you're right. It's beautiful. <laughs> no, no, it, Juve this is football there. heritage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good. It's, it's great for the league. It's great yeah. for the south of Italy. Like, yeah. you know, it's usually the northern teams that are winning. So to have a southern team win, it's uh, it's great. Like, you know, even economically, like the city of Naples is doing great with uh, Napoli winning uh as much as they've won, they haven't even won the school to get. And I think like, uh, yeah, the city's that's, making so much money. Right now. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's something that people don't really realize is that for Napoli specifically <clears throat> to win a Scudetto doesn't just mean that, Oh, you have a trophy in the case. It impacts the entire population. Yeah. Pretty, pretty big. I mean, it's, it's tourism is going to skyrocket. You're going to have more people visiting the city you're gonna have more international clout with with winning stuff like that, like it, even it, performing in in Champions League, like it, it's bringing like a, a more of a a brand, I guess, recognition. Like, yeah, you know, it's 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 having its effect on on the city. You have people, and even like having a team. I know this might not actually no, this is related. I would say having an inter, such an international team. Yeah, you have literally eight like businesses popping up that are. Like in Georgia, like chartered, airlines. Chartered flights from Tbilisi to Napoli. To really? watch Kabata yeah. yeah. To watch Kabata You have yeah. people coming from Korea to watch Kim. Yep. You have people coming from Mexico to watch Lozano. I feel bad for them. <laughs> uh, sorry. But he has, his, he has his moments, to be fair. But, you know, having an international team, too, like, is yeah. doing great for the, the city. Like, it's... it's yeah, it is. It's beautiful. The stadium on, on a match day is, like... It's like the World Cup in the San Paulo, yeah. in the Maradona. You see flags from every country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a dream. And, and that's the beauty of Napoli. Yeah, and, and as we close out here, um, maybe just maybe just answer this. Answer what Napoli Club Toronto means to you and why people should join it. Okay, we'll start maybe stuff first yeah. and then we'll pull them. Uh, have my answer on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for me, like Napoli Toronto just means like bringing together like a group of people who all share love for something. And I really feel like a lot of people who are not like football fans just think of soccer like, oh, it's just a sport. Like there's no need to be like emotional or something like that. Like, you know, when your team loses and someone says, oh, it's just a game or, oh, you don't know the players. People don't get or it. Or anything like that. Like they don't, they don't get, get it. it. And like with Napoli especially, it's like all of us like Neapolitan people, it's like we're almost not like we're Italian, but we're, all, we're our own thing on the side. And it's like, just a big group of people coming together. And like he had mentioned before, we're not a big amount of people, but we're very like united and passionate about our team. And I really feel like it brings us all together. And it's like almost like your family. And it's just like a place where you could all come, enjoy time together. Like many of us through the club have become all close friends. Like someone like Karim a few years ago, I didn't know him. Now me and Karim talk every single day. And so I think you should really just join, even if you're someone coming up, watching sports because Napoli has a young and exciting team and we're just like here we'll, we're here to like accept anyone no matter who you are and we're always open to new fans absolutely love it great. that was good no uh, we're we're a family like you know like uh, Steph said like it it's a team that you don't follow for glory we're we're very passionate about the the club and uh, yeah, we're not many in the GTA. I know it's you know mostly, you know, not many Neapolitans. Mostly you know Calabres, you know Inter fans, Milan fans, Juve fans. But that's more the reason to you know unite and and stay together and and uh, and come watch the games together on match day and and be a big family and cause a, a burdello, a ruckus. <laughs> we have a decibel uh, light over here. <laughs> <laughs> decibel <laughs> heavy, never. <laughs> <laughs> I know today we couldn't give you guys any. You I know, know no footage. They didn't give us no uh, no no ammunition to to make a ruckus. But uh, yeah, no. I feel if 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 either you're a Napoli fan or you're um, you know in the market for a team, it's Napoli is a team that will make you fall in love with football. So our doors are always open to to new fans uh, or just Napoli fans who have you know maybe haven't heard of us yet. Yeah. yeah.
I mean, I it's, it's, they're perfectly said it. I can't add anything else to that. I mean, Napoli Club Toronto is we have our slogan, which is Nessuno come noi, no one like us. And I truly believe that there is nobody like us. Um, the fan community that that we have here in the GTA for Napoli is truly unique, and it's close to what you can experience in Naples. Yeah. But you know, Naples is Naples. You can't ever touch the the original. But we we come very close to it, and everyone from all walks of life. I mean, there was times where. When I was a kid growing up watching Napoli, I felt like I had nobody else to watch the game with other than my dad and my uncle. That was it. But having this community, going out with like, coming out with like minded people, watching the game, you know, just creating friendships that are going to last hopefully a lifetime, it's something that's really special. And like Steph said before, it's, it's not a community, it's a family because everyone who comes through these doors. To me, they're they're my brother and sister. It's Absolutely. not they're not they're not a stranger to me. You're you're Neapolitan. Even if you're not Neapolitan, we had Georgians come in uh, one time oh, yeah? from Georgia, Georgia. from Georgia, no and and that day they they were Neapolitan. They <laughs> everyone's Neapolitan when he comes. You're Neapolitan when he comes. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> awesome, you be a fan, but I like seeing Napoli win. So hey, oh there you go. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't so mind that's it. I don't mind it. But yeah, I mean, just. Like uh, when I when I started off this podcast by saying the feeling is sometimes indescribable, I'm gonna end it one more time by saying the feeling is indescribable. Being a Napoli fan is not is not just a thing that you do for fun. It's it's a life. It's a way, it's, of, life. It's a way of life. Absolutely. We are not many. <laughs> it's like the Marines, the few, the proud. But that, <laughs> that, that is what we are. It's a way of life, yeah. and we want to share that uniqueness with everyone in this city. So even if you don't like Napoli or not, it's not that you don't, fo you follow a different team. You're just curious. Come on by. I mean, we're, we're always open for, for anyone. So yeah, that's all I got. Beautiful. beautiful. Awesome. No, awesome. beautiful to hear. Um, thank you guys for having a conversation with us today. Thanks thank you. Thanks yeah, for having yeah, us on. This has been awesome. You guys, for coming. I, you guys absolutely kill it. Um, when I said at the beginning of the podcast, I meant it. You guys are the best fan club in Toronto. <laughs> the, the community you guys have built is, is beautiful. And thank and thank you to Resto Bar Cafe for having us as well, for hosting us. It's been amazing here. And we got we to gotta link up soon again. Of Anytime. course. 100%. Anytime. Maybe in Italy. <laughs> there you go. That's it. We'll, we'll, we'll be there. We'll be we'll there. Be there. Uh, maybe the, I will too. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but yeah, no thanks everybody for watching. Um, thanks to the boys for coming out with us. Uh, drop a comment, like, subscribe, and we the culture. We the culture, man. Peace. Yeah. Awesome. Good fan. Amazing. Good, good job. Good job. Oh, Thank you. Oh, <laughs> let's, go, let's get a quick like pick. Oh, yeah.